Indians have been living in times of transition for many years. But these are times of exceptional movement. Not only are Indians moving physically, emotionally, economically, culturally and politically, the world around them is changing. transition. The thrust of change, in all senses, is being felt by Indians as persons. In fact, in India, a breed of young professionals has already emerged. Confident of their special knowledge and skills, these persons have an assured sense of power. What motivates them is a high quality of life and high-voltage professional success. Vish Khanna chooses to live in a seaside home at Juhu, away from the elite South Mumbai localities, even though he can afford it. I'm sure there are a lot of people who say that these two are yuppies. Uh, but as far as I know, I mean, we try a lot to not to have that uh, yuppie image. It's interesting how some of these young professionals are making a complex transition. Many young persons have to face the contradiction between a culture at home which is essentially warm, human, peaceful and often spiritual and a work culture of professionalism which demands impersonal objectivity and aggression. The celebrated management guru Peter Drucker thinks that knowledge workers will dominate today's age of information. In India, the young professionals who are most influential today are clearly knowledge workers. Like in the rest of the world, the workplace is seeing a transition in work culture. The new knowledge workers are earning the maximum and clearly enjoying real power. They mark the arrival of the individual as the fulcrum of change at the end of the millennium. influential consumption culture is working its way into the contemporary Indian consciousness. The supermarket dream is the most flashy and fashionable. Consumerism is not economics. It is culture, it is psychology, it is also even an ideology. People consume not because they have to purchase something, they consume also because they have to consume. It is a perfect cure for loneliness and isolation and it also gives meaning to an otherwise meaningless life. Today, the ultimate fantasy is glamour. A ubiquitous but ephemeral something called glamour. It can be bought and importantly so. The glamour myth is touching everything. The mind, body and even imagination. But make no mistake, the glamour myth isn't something trivial or to be taken lightly, it's at the center of a lot of the transition taking place in India today. The road ahead to the emergence of a new society is difficult but possible. The success or failure to improve the quality of life in a real sense for a large mass of Indians as individuals will be the determinant of whether development in India can transcend technocratic progress and touch human welfare.